Have you ever had to edit a really long interview in DaVinci Resolve? If you have, then maybe you have wished that there would be some way of showing the transcribed audio as text right here on the timeline, so that you wouldn't always have to scrub through the actual video clips when you're searching for some uh, particular conversation or some dialogue that you have in mind. I actually thought that it might not be possible to do in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, I was doing silly things like uh, changing the clip attributes here, giving them new names just in order to see, see a little bit of text here while I was editing. But I actually figured out that there's a really good way of doing this using a free uh, AI tool called Whisper. And that will actually allow us to uh, transcribe our audio and uh, uh, place it as uh, subtitle files right here as a, uh, on top of the video as a subtitle track. So let's just get started. I'm gonna go to my browser, let's search for Whisper GitHub and it's this first result here, OpenAI slash Whisper. It has pretty good instructions for installation, but in case you want to see an overview of the process, let me just show you how to do it on a Windows computer. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare a folder for this. So let me just go to my files here and I'm going to open a command line in the folder where I want to install this in. It doesn't have to be C drive or anything. I'm working on a hard disk uh, here that has a lot of space for this kind of stuff. And the first thing we want to do uh, is we want to create a virtual environment for our uh, Whisper project so that all the dependencies and everything can be installed in that folder and it's kind of isolated for, from the rest of the system. So uh, in order to do that let's just use the virtual env command. You do need to have Python installed by the way but I'm assuming that many of you do already. If you don't have Python, Python installed just go ahead and search for Python and install it and then this command should work. Um, so I'm gonna do a new virtual environment let's call it whisper env and I'm just gonna hit enter and that's going to create this new folder here called whisper env and inside of it there's a couple of folders and files that kind of make up the virtual environment here. Okay, so that's the first step. Let's go ahead and uh, activate this by referring to that folder. And I'm gonna do... I'm gonna refer to the scripts folder inside that folder and then inside the scripts folder there's a script called activate and I'm gonna hit enter and now it says whisper environment here in parentheses which means that now that virtual environment is the active environment and now we can start installing stuff so uh, now it's just let's get the uh, install script from here so they have this pip install script on the github I'm gonna copy that paste it in here hit enter and it's gonna start to install all the dependencies that Whisper needs and this is going to take a little while. Let's speed this thing up so that you don't have to wait. Now while this is installing let me just open up another command uh, line window here. I'm going to type in cmd, open up another command prompt here and uh, now it's a good time to check for our um, uh, CUDA version. So uh, while Whisper can work with just the CPU, it's much faster to do this uh, transcription process on the graphics card, on the GPU. And for that, um, you need to grab the correct version of PyTorch. You can check your CUDA version uh, from your NVIDIA uh, CUDA enabled graphics card by typing in, for example, NVIDIA SMI. And if we look here, we can see that I'm using CUDA version 11.6. And you might want to check your version and install the correct version of, of Torch uh, based on your CUDA version. Uh, I'm just uh, saying this because the default stuff that got installed by the script did, didn't actually work on the GPU for me. So it only did it on the CPU. Uh, but when I installed a 
different version of PyTorch, then it started encoding on the GPU and it was much faster like that. All right, now let's just wait for this to finish and then we'll pick it up from here. So next I'm going to go ahead and grab the correct version of, of PyTorch and for me it the one that worked was actually like this which is a bit weird because I tried with uh, uh, 1.16 uh, but that didn't work for some reason but this one did work so I'm, I'm gonna use the one that worked for me but you might want to you might need to try a couple of different versions of, of PyTorch all right, got that installed. So now we can test if Whisper is working. I'm gonna just type in something generic like Whisper help. And if it's working, then we should get a list of um, items here from Whisper. And indeed, it seems like it's working just fine. So now let me go to resolve here. And now I want to export the audio from my timeline. So let me go to the Deliver tab here. And I'm going to uncheck, uh, from on the Video tab, I'm going to uncheck Export Video. And I'm going to go to the Audio tab and let's set it to Wave. And Linear PCM is fine. And then I'm just going to add that to the Render Queue. And render it out as an audio file. I'm going to now go, go ahead and grab that audio file from the render location and I'm gonna go to my whisper environment folder in here and let me create a new folder called audio just for my audio files so everything stays uh, neatly organized I'm gonna paste my rendered audio file in here all right let me let me copy this audio file name here into my command line and now I'm going to I'm going to run Whisper, and now I'm going to refer to the audio file which is uh, inside the uh, Whisper uh, environment. So let me type in V and hit Tab to auto complete that. And then I'm going to do slash audio and slash, and then I'm going to use uh, quotes to paste this in as a string since it has spaces in the file name it might be best to quote it and then uh, let's just go ahead and uh, set the language so this is actually a Finnish language clip which is pretty awesome that such a small language is supported there's only like five million of Finnish speakers in the world so it's really cool to have even Finnish uh, supported of course it supports tons of other languages and it supports English really well so you know with English you're gonna get even better results but in my situation I need uh, Finnish so let me type in language Finnish and then I'm gonna set the model to be the biggest one that I can fit on my graphics card so that's the second largest one I have eight gigabytes of VRAM on my graphics card so I can fit in the medium model uh, if you have I think it was maybe 12 gigabytes then you can even fit the large model but the more you have uh, VRAM uh, on your graphics card the better for this then you can fit in the large models and that will improve the quality of your transcription but uh, the medium seems to work just fine now I'm just going to hit enter to start the transcribing process and it's gonna take a little while to load everything into memory but then after it's loaded into memory then it's gonna get started and it's going to, going to start to output the um, transcribed text in here right in the command line and it's also going to create a couple of text files out of it so you know you don't just have to copy it from the command line it's gonna be also it's gonna create a couple of files where where the transcription can be found all right so now we are starting to get some output here uh, so it's uh, giving us the uh, transcription of the of the audio all right so after the transcription has finished you're gonna have these three files here inside the environment uh, folder and one is an SRT file which is nice because that has the time codes for everything there's also a text file that just contains the pure text and uh, we are going to use the SRT file here so 
that's a file we can just bring directly into DaVinci Resolve. Let me go to the edit page here and I'm gonna right click here in the video tracks section and I'm gonna add a subtitle track right here. And now that I have a subtitle track I should be able to just simply drag and drop my SRT file on that subtitle track like so. And it's uh, important to make it, make all the subtitles start right in the beginning. So let me select uh, everything from this track by pressing Y on the keyboard for uh, selecting forward on this uh, subtitle track here. Now they're all selected and now I can drag them all to the beginning of my timeline. And that should match the sync of the, of the uh, subtitles with the actual audio. All right. So now we can see all the text from this interview right here. It's in Finnish, so uh, that might, might look weird to you. But it did a reasonable, a pretty good job. Not a perfect job by any means, but enough for me to kind of understand uh, what's going on in these different clips. So now it's going to be much more efficient for me to kind of take a quick look at the timeline and select the uh, kind of uh, parts of the interview that I need. That's how easy it is. And this also will double as a closed captions file for YouTube. So you can also go ahead and do file um, export subtitle and you can export this after you have fixed all, uh, all the timing issues that there might be. And uh, maybe you wanna fix some uh, of the errors that there might have been in the transcription. After you have fixed all that, uh, then you can just export this as an uh, SRT file and you can Put that on YouTube for example for for closed captions. I hope this was a useful tutorial for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on fastertutorials.com.